and whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you. Welcome to this meeting of recreation and amenities today, the 20th of October 2020. Um, before I do apologies for absence, I would like to apologize uh, for my lack of voice, although some of you may prefer that and it may actually end up shortening the meeting um, and we might make a bake off. Um, so I apologize. I will try my best. If I, my voice does completely go, I will pass over to the vice chair for the rest of the meeting. Uh, agenda item one, apologies for absence. I have received apologies from Councillor Miller and the Mayor, Councillor Arlett, but they are apologies for lateness. Are there any other apologies? I think so. Everyone else seems to be here. Okay, are there any declarations of interest? Councillor Clark. Um, page nine, agenda five. Okay. The Makings Recreation Toilets. Now, there was uh, a vote taken and the public voted against it. So why is this brought back? Oh, Councillor Clark, we're currently doing declarations of interest. We're about to do public participation, so you may as well continue. But we were under declarations of interest. So if we move now to public participation, right. uh, you may continue. Continue your point. Yeah, my, um, the public voted on this and it was voted against. So why has it been put back on the agenda for a further meeting? Um, because of the last council resolution, it remains on, on progress and it's, it's ongoing. Although, as you know, it hasn't been progressed massively in recent months. Well, I did put a proposal about putting car parking down Mill Meadows and it was voted against and I was informed that I couldn't bring it back to the on another agenda. Okay, but the resolution for this wasn't actually against it. The resolution that ended up happening was that, that it was felt that further consultation was needed and it needed to go out to more people because the amount of people that filled in the consultation weren't representative of, uh, you know, the town really so we felt it needed to go to more people that was i believe the resolution um i may stand corrected but i don't believe so it was so that's why it remains on the progress report but at the moment obviously with with all of the restrictions in place we aren't able to hold a proper consultation so the project is on hold okay thank you okay um, I believe we also have Councillor Hamilton here to speak during public participation. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Will Hamilton, 153 Grays Road. I've actually got three questions or statements tonight, so uh, I'll put my hand up three times, given that we've got 20 minutes, uh, if that's all right with you, Chair. Uh, the first item I'd like to talk to um, is actually item number seven, which is the putting green. Uh, and I want to give you a little bit of history on the putting green. I think the putting green is a fantastic asset for the town and uh, I think it's fantastic where it sits uh, next to the river. But the state of it at the moment is quite unplayable. Um, and in the past, it's been cut and it was always cut on a Friday afternoon by the park staff. They did a fantastic job um, when they had a full team. They were able to do it every Friday. And Mrs B ran it from the uh, kiosk and um, a lot of people had a lot of enjoyment from it. And the park staff, you know, three years ago, uh, when they didn't have a full team, they weren't able to cut it, but Mrs B was always on the case and they, she kind of made sure that the putting green was kept to a high standard. Um, we then had a, a meeting oh, about two years ago with the um, England golfers, the uh, lady, uh, one of the lady golfers, which were the local residents who wanted to turn it into a, um, with Forest School, an environment area and a putting green. And I thought that would, was good. And the the resolution coming from that meeting was definitely continue with your, your, your project, um, but we would like to see grass rather than plastic. And that was the key thing that, and Stefan had brought that, uh, that team together and it seemed to be working quite well. Um, since then, obviously the kiosk has not been functioning and there hasn't been anyone to give out the putters. But I think this is a great opportunity for the park staff to really go to town over the winter and see if they can get the surface up to a, a really good standard. My view is that if you make it good, then people will come and use it. 
Um, now, I know the kiosk is difficulty, and I think what we should be doing is working towards a point whereby we open the kiosk again next Easter, but we, we, we staff it with volunteers. So what I would like to see is that we work on the current putting green, bring it up to a really good standard. People will then use it. We staff the kiosk with volunteers and um, we give it the best chance of, of, of producing revenue next year. Thank you. Okay, Jay. thank you for that point. Um, as you mentioned, we did have presentations and, and this was an agenda item on open spaces and recreation and amenities uh, last year. And uh, we had a resolution from that. Tonight, we're not deciding whether we have golf there or not. The resolutions are about whether we create a working group to continue with this project or whether we don't. So it's not whether we have the golf there or not that's up for uh, decision really tonight. Because we already have decided we've been given a steer in that direction. I appreciate that this wasn't something like a lot of things that were moved forward. And I don't want to keep saying because of COVID, we know why it is. Um, but now that we are in a position to continue with this project, in a way, working with the same lady that you mentioned, unfortunately, um, the other lady that presented has had to pull out. She is um, she's expecting another baby, which is obviously wonderful, but it means that she can no longer commit to the project. However, um, Laura is still involved. So um, we have a steer. Tonight's more about deciding whether we continue with that and formalise a working group or not. Um, you want to, you said you had two other points. Would you like to make them now? Yeah, the second question uh, refers to item number nine, if I may, which is the cycling on Mill Meadows. And uh, I've been a little outspoken on this one because my the reason for it is I feel that we should be really kind to cyclists. And particularly, I think we should be kind to recreational cyclists. And um, by putting the no cycling signs down on the path, we are effectively saying that they can't cycle there or discouraging them beyond cycling there. Yes, it's a footpath. Yes, it's a, uh, a towpath. Yes, by law, they shouldn't be cycling on the towpath. I take that point. Um, but I feel that we could take the lead from Remnham, which basically gives walkers priority, but cyclists um, have to give way. And if we take those signs that Remnham have done, which are very nice, Thames Pass branded, et cetera, et cetera, and put them up, I think that would be a nicer way and a kinder way to run our town rather than the approach we've taken so far, if I was being quite to the point. When I went cycling down to Windsor, I went through Higginson Park and there was um, two or three toddlers on their bikes with their stabilisers biking through the, through the park there on the towpath. Uh, went further on down to Windsor and at Windsor there was two or three as well cycling, recreational cyclists who are enjoying the join the towpath. And I think if we're a little bit more accommodating and just put the signs up that Remnant have, we'll get get on a lot better than what we currently have. Okay. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank you for coming to this meeting and addressing this agenda item um, instead of writing to the Henley Standard letters page. Um, I think this is definitely more appropriate. Um, this is actually a good time to bring up the fact that I did receive uh, an email from the office of our MP, John Hell, who uh, was concerned on behalf of residents because we were considering creating a cycle path through Mill and Marsh Meadows or allowing people to cycle on the designated footpath. Um, I did obviously write back to um, John Hell's office and explained that we would be discussing it tonight with a view to obviously retaining uh, the towpath as a designated footpath um, and they were appreciative of that. Um, I believe they've been contacted by concerned residents. As you know, being a designated footpath, cycling has actually never been allowed but because it's never been a big issue um, and pedestrians and cyclists have really got along over the years we've never really had to enforce anything because of the way behavior changed over covid we did have to discourage people from cycling on the path however they were still able to cycle along the grass um, the other issue that we have although we will come onto this agenda item anyway is that you are not allowed to cycle up until one end of the you know over the bridge for example uh, over the lock bridge and you aren't allowed to cycle further on down towpath. So it's basically, if we did 
let people cycle along there or create a path where are we creating a path from or two somewhere they can't cycle to somewhere they can't cycle it doesn't really make much sense but if you'd like to move on to your third point uh, and the last point is the item number 10 in terms of the cemetery benches and there's been a lot spoken about this um i in 2017 had to attend the case with the town clerk the then town clerk of alexis Leventus versus miller at the diocese court and I have to tell you what a heartbreaking experience that was. And I have to tell you that this council needs to be more sensitive to how it deals with that cemetery and how it deals with the residents and their benches in that cemetery. And I ask that this committee, given the experience that I went through in 2017 with the town clerk and with um, Councillor Smewing at the time, that we really try and contact these residents of the bench, benches rather than putting letters on their benches uh, in the way that we have in the past. Now, I'm aware that Mr. Crook um, had a, uh, an email um, um, with, uh, with the town clerk. I just wonder what follow up that has been to that. Mr. Crook is currently grieving because of his loss of his daughter recently. Otherwise, he would have come to the meeting tonight. But he's very anxious to know what the outcome is of his email to the town clerk. Um, if I could ask the town clerk to answer Councillor Hamilton. Um, I don't believe I've received any uh, email uh, from Mr Crook at all. Uh, Councillor Crook? Yeah, um, I did discuss this with um, Lena and um, over the ownership of that particular bench and um, I, I, I do believe that Lena is aware of the actual rightful ownership of the bench. So um, I will wait for Lena to communicate that with the people because I don't want to discuss it. It's quite a sensitive issue, but it's actually the rightful ownership. Um, so um, I think we'll leave it at that. OK, thank you. Um, is there any other public participation? Anyone waiting to speak? No, thank you. Thank you. OK, in that case, we will move on to agenda item four, which is the minutes of the last Recreation and Amenities Committee held on the 8th of September. You'll find these on pages five to seven. Are there any amendments that anybody feels need to be made? I see none in that case. I say move the minutes. Do I have a second there? Thank you. All in favour? Thank you very much. That's carried. We now move on to agenda item five, the progress report on page nine. I will go down these one by one. If you have anything to add or question, please uh, raise your hand and I'll pause. Uh, Mill Meadows toilets. As you can see, we have additional additional cleans booked in. Uh, Fair Mile Chapel. Uh, CCTV at Macon's Recreation Ground. Donation of a Slovenian hay rack. Uh, Councillor Eggleton. The, um, the, uh, the camera's been put in, or has the camera been trialled already, or is that still in progress? We, we did so, trial uh, one, but we needed another trial, didn't we, Becky? Could you remind me? Yeah, so we trialled one, and the images... They didn't show enough information that would be effective if the police wanted to pursue anything. So we've now trialled another one called a colour view. And we're just waiting for the um, images of that to see if that's um, appropriate and whether the police would be able to use any of those to progress any kind of enforcement. Uh, Councillor Clark. On the um, Slovenian ARAC, I'm reading it in here, I don't know if I'm wrong or right. It's being transported from Slovenia. I thought it was coming from Oxford. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it came from Oxford. <laughs> Sorry, town clerk. <laughs> You're muted, Sheridan. Thanks. Um, there is a Slovenian hay rack uh, at Harcourt Arboretum just outside um, Oxford, um, but I believe this is a different hay rack to that. Um, but uh, but yes, it's, it would be easy to get confused because there has been discussion about that hay rack, yes. May I add, would it be my personal feeling is it should be put down Mill Meadows instead of up at the uh, dog walking pitch 
by Islands Park. It's better for the people to come and visit by the river than sitting in a field where people run their dogs around. Okay, location isn't really a decision uh, we're making tonight, but when we did discuss it, uh, the committee felt quite strongly against um, somewhere like Mill Meadows for a variety of reasons. Um, yeah. Uh, if we move on to Riverbank Repairs, which is an agenda item, uh, provision of toilets at Makin's Recreation Ground. As I mentioned earlier, this project's on hold until uh, a proper consultation can be held. Uh, park services um, update. Obviously, you can see no cycling is an agenda item. I'm sure if, uh, if the parks manager has anything to add, he can um, add them on the specific agenda items um, rather than repeating himself now. Um, the Henley Litter Challenge, that's ongoing. I don't know if there's much of an update, really. Is there, Councillor Plant? I, I'm guessing there's not. You're mute. No, the, only spoken, the only school I've spoken to recently is Valley Road, and basically until we're out of the current situation, they're not really keen to implement anything new for obvious reasons. So hopefully something we can pick up from springtime next year. Uh, all the ideas of kids collecting litter, et cetera, with current sanitising demands are not such a great idea. Sorry about that. No, it's understandable. Uh, the signage working group is obviously still an ongoing project. Um, the Lido working group, obviously, this has also um, needed to be put on hold um, until the new year. Paving around the Lightling Pavilion, um, that's actually due to start. I, did I hear you say uh, it's due to start in the next few weeks, Carl? Yeah, it should, it should be um, two weeks uh, yesterday. So. Okay, brilliant. Uh, we now move on. Oh, no, we have the welcome wall, which is also still ongoing. That's the progress report. If there are no questions, we'll move on to the budget. Um, first up on pages 11 to 14, uh, to receive and consider the draft budget figures for next year, 21-22. Uh, You've obviously had the report in front of you, um, and you can see um, I'm quite happy to go through. I mean, it would help my voice if I didn't have to. Um, maybe if I could just say the number and if anyone has anything to raise, um, they can. Um, so this is under three detailed consideration. Um, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3 temporary moorings. 3.4, car parking charges. 3.5, red line lawn licenses. 3.6, events at Mill Meadows. 3.7, uh, maintenance costs for the toilets. 3.8, the Henley and Bloom budget allocation. 3.9, the emptying of dog waste bins. 3.10, tree surgery. Three point, oh, well, you can see that. That's just for information. Um, is there anything that anyone believes should be added that we haven't thought of? I see no suggestions. Um, therefore, uh, I will propose from the chair that we go with the recommendation uh, 4.1. Uh, it is recommended that the committee resolve to note the attached draft budget figures for 21-22. All in favour? Thank you very much. We now move on to part two of agenda item six uh, to receive and consider and note the management accounts uh, to up to September 2020 on pages 15 and 16 of the agenda. Um, as expected, really. <laughs> Any comments or questions? No. We then move on to agenda item seven. Mill Meadows, uh, the mini golf on the putting green site. There is a report. Uh, you will have obviously heard my response to Councillor Hamilton. We have had a steer from this committee in the past. In fact, if the committee is no longer minded to go down that road, um, then we obviously wouldn't progress with the recommendations at the end of this report. Um, however, work has been ongoing. We can continue with the project. We did have a steer previously. Um, so let's discuss. Councillor Plant, did you have your hand up? 
Yeah, I, I was going to say it seems like the right thing to do to create a kind of a working group to have a look at how it can be used. Um, great space to be used and hopefully future generations, old and young, can get some good use from it, whether it's a traditional putting green or forest school or crazy putting with windmills or whatever is deemed a good cost to reward to do with it. But yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. And if the budget there's for the legal fees, then absolutely fantastic. Let's go ahead with A and B would be my suggestion and get the space being used. Brilliant. Um, Councillor Lambert, you're muted. Thank you. I just have a question really. Um, this has come up um, and been discussed a few times over the last couple of years. And um, the question of how much income um, the putting green actually made has been asked several times. I see that 2.3 says it's less than 1k per year, but do we have a more accurate figure? Um, it's been asked for several times. That I've never seen it. I do apologise if I've missed it, though. Does anyone know what it actually made? I, I wouldn't know the exact figure, I'm afraid. I'm not sure if if any officer would have that to hand either. Next to nothing. Uh, uh, yeah, town clerk, you're muted. Um, I don't have the exact figure. Uh, however, it would be easy enough for me to check um, the past. As long as it's been separated out on the management accounts, it'd be easy enough for me to check um, uh, the, uh, the past few years when it was open to, to see what the income level was. Um, I should be able to send that over to you uh, shortly. Um, Councillor Eggleton, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I was going to ask, because I've asked the same question quite a few times and I've never had an answer for it either. Okay. Uh, Councillor Miller? Yeah, I'm sorry if this was discussed earlier, but um, if we're going to possibly establish a working group to undertake further investigations, does that mean we're going to be looking into opening the kiosk as well? Because... That is I think that's definitely one of the options, but there are there are obviously various options, and, and that's the sort of. I think it's, it's to me. I think it's important. I, I don't know what happened when we when that was closed. It seems so long ago, and I can't find any paperwork. Um, perhaps um, the deputy mayor might remember, but I I think that it. Uh, I think it would be great if we could look into reinstate and getting the kiosk up and running. I know it means staff and volunteers, but. Um, but I, that, to me, the kiosk and, and doing something, as Councillor Plant said, with the green, getting something going there for the kids, I think would be fantastic. Um, I agree. If it, if it works out that way, I agree. That could be really good. We actually, it wasn't this committee that decided. It was, uh, it was done, at, I believe, from previous chairmen um, of Value for Money um, and Finance that it's, it was a value for money decision that was then taken to finance. And then I found a minute on town and community a couple of years back referring to it um, because it was actually run by tourist information. But RNA, with it being at Mill Meadows, is probably its better home. So um, it can certainly be investigated as part of this. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Eggleton. As you as you um, quite aware, quite um, aware that I've always wanted the kiosk to stay open and open for a lot longer for for, for, for promoting the town from the river really, and uh, you know that I was pushing that for for many many years and tried to get it reopened. So if this does work with that kiosk um, opening and whatever we decide, or whether there's a kiosk in the um, built into the actual putting area um, but um, if there is a possibility to open that up or to promote the re um, to promote the town from the river like before um, I think I'm, I'm still fighting that corner. Brilliant um, so the recommendations are to create a working group I already know obviously from this coming back onto the agenda and, and the work that's gone into to bringing it to that level, um, that councillors Gavashak, Elgleton and Crook would like to be on the working group. And I'm quite happy to be part of the working group as, as chair of this committee. However, I can't commit to it full time um, simply because of the amount of work these projects take um, and the, the, the work that I'm already doing. Um, is there anybody else that would like to be part of this working group? Councillor Miller and Councillor Hooper and Councillor Isaac. Yes. Okay. 
So in that case, I think it's quite quite reasonable for me not to be on the working group. Um, town clerk. Um, on the question about um, uh, putting green uh, income, um, I'm looking at March 2018, uh, which I think it would be the last final um, full year that it was open. Um, and the income, um, it's been lumped together with uh, all other um, kind of sales from the information center as the kiosk was part of the information center. Um, and total income, uh, which is lumped in with is uh, 1.7 thousand, but that includes all merchandise as well. Um, so I need to do a bit more digging to, to um, look at exactly what the share of it is. Um, but yes, it looks like um, any income from the putting green would have been around about a thousand pounds or less. So traditional putting hasn't obviously previously been very lucrative. Um, not that that's the main aim. I think we're all trying to just do something nice in our town, but we could certainly make some money and we are looking to decrease deficits. Um, Councillor Eggleton. Um, is there any possibility of going back to probably about five years? Because that would then give a fair representation of it, um, being as there was, um, it's all dependent on volunteers and when it was open. And it's not always open um, at certain times of the year. So when you think that's what it's taken over the year, well, it's not actually opened over a year. I think it's about six months or seven, seven months. So you have to base it on that, not on a year. I think we're just talking about the traditional golf putting aspect of it, not yeah. the kiosk aspect of it. The kiosk aspect of it is really separate, but if it can be tied together, that's great, but it, that may not be the case. Um, Councillor Plant. I was just going to say that looking at what it earned historically is not particularly helpful, given we could manage it differently, do a different offering, etc. So kind of, I think for want of better detail, we can do something better in the future. Absolutely agree. Would anyone else like to? Oh, sorry, Town Clerk. Um, sorry, although this goes against what Lawrence has just just said. Um, uh, but um, looking five years prior to that, uh, total income uh, for merchandise and putting green was uh, two thousand eight hundred. Um, so a bit of an increase, but um, uh, but still relatively small. Okay. So uh, we. Oh, sorry, Councillor Hooper. Yeah. I, I, I think also we've got to remember that it's very much governed by the weather. This know? is true. And if we have a bad summer, well, obviously the takers are going to go be going down, but it would be great to see it open again, without a doubt. OK, I think we've got a general consensus. Um, we have six names forward for the working group. I don't anticipate all six councillors being able to make every single meeting, um, but it's that's a good mix of people uh, to carry it forward. Lots of enthusiasm. I'm sure. Um, so I would like to propose that those six people join the working group um, and that we go for 4.1 A and B, that the committee recommends to full council that an additional £5,000 be provided for the legal and professional fees budget to facilitate further investigations. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Plant, all of those in favour? Thank you very much, that's carried. We now move on to agenda item eight, which is the temporary moorings payment methods. Again, there is a report on the agenda, page 21, and you can see the recommendation at the end, Councillor Plant. I was going to say, great report, uh, really thorough, and yeah, about time to get rid of taxing labor kind of costly process of payment methods just streamline it with an app um i haven't looked into obviously apps that do oh you've frozen has he frozen such for things but from yeah. our own bookings to install and use if not some of them are actually free so you froze them briefly i didn't catch the end of what you said Oh, so I was going to say that some of our apps at work are basically free to use and still provide payment processing and booking. So it should be simple enough to do so. I you know, couldn't agree more with the streamlining the system. Brilliant. Are there any other comments? Can we take that as a proposal then, Councillor Plant? Yeah. I'll second that. Thank you, Councillor Miller. Councillor Isaac, were you about to second it? Okay. Uh, all in favour? 
Thank you. That is carried. <coughs> we now move on to agenda item nine. Oh, sorry, Tom Clark. Thank you very much. Um, I have just realised on the previous item, um, although you've resolved to set up a working group, um, uh, uh, there, in order for it to actually function, uh, you'd also need to appoint members to that working group. I did. I, I proposed six councillors. Did you? Oh, my apologies. I, no, I, I proposed, just for the record, I proposed councillors Gavashak, um, Crook and Eggleton, and then I asked if there were any more, and I believe it was councillors Miller, Hooper and Isaac that also joined. Apologies for that. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we now move on to agenda item nine, which is cycling um, at Miller Marsh Meadows. Um, this is on page 25 of your agendas. Um, we've obviously heard from Councillor Hamilton this evening, and you've heard uh, my reply um, and our communication uh, from the office of our MP. Would anyone like to kick off the discussion? <clears throat> Uh, Council plan. Uh, only because I am a really keen cyclist. I think that the two can exist together and save for a few who are, I don't know, potentially rude, ill-mannered, lacking in respect to others. It normally works really well. You know, the rowing coaches on the other side with pedestrians, there's the odd issue. But on the whole, again, I think, you know, like classic English mentality, it's the issues that are reported, but all the times it happens seamlessly and positively mm -hmm. and faultlessly, it isn't. So like, I would love to see kind of the coexistence of the two together. I do completely understand your point that beyond uh, the lock, you're obviously not meant to really cycle through the meadow, but you only need to see the track in the field to again know that plenty of people cycle all the way to, through to Ship Lake, even see some families bringing their kids in that way in the morning. So it's kind of, it is used. And I think apart from a few very busy days in summer, there isn't a whole kind of problem associated with it, but that is just my own personal perspective and I cycle a lot, so. <laughs> Councillor, Councillor Miller. Yeah, it, it's very difficult because as long as I can remember, and that's going back quite a few years, we have always had a few um, cyclists along there. It, it's just got worse recently and it's, a lot of these cyclists, you know, in the good old days, they'd have a bell and they would alert you that they were going to cycle up behind you and past you with their bell. Uh, these days, they don't. And the amount of near cardiac arrests I've had or falling in a river because someone's just whizzed up behind me, um, you know, but it, again, it's rare. It's not all the time. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, as uh, Councillor Plant said, it would be nice if we could, you know, if we could continue this. I... I, I don't I don't know but they're not allowed to cycle on the lock but they do you know this is the problem they're not really allowed to cycle on on the um we put we put signs on the pavements now but they are still doing it I I don't know how we're ever actually going to be able to stop it um it's uh but it's not all the time it's you know it's blame it on covid we've just got more cyclists at the moment sorry uh Councillor Eggleton yeah, I don't, I'm not um, too keen on having cyclists on a on a footpath. If it was a cycle path, then it'd be completely different. But um, and I um, and a, a, a word to the town clerk is um, by giving people authorization um, to use the um, thing or this council um, giving permission for people to cycle. Would that make the town? Um, then the town council responsible if there was an incident, which there has been several incidents where people were knocked off uh, and knocked over on the pavement. There was a lady that went into the river, uh, avoiding uh, a cyclist. Um, there's been a few aggressive cyclists uh, that I've come across um, when asking them to um, not to ride on the footpath. Um, they uh, become very aggressive. Um, so. Uh, I haven't seen the, the positive side of um, some of the cyclists. Um, so, uh, could the town clerk, would that, um, would you be able to answer that for me? What was the question? Sorry, I missed the question. Yeah. Answer well, the, the question, if you gave permission um, for or give um, cyclists the authority to ride a bike on a footpath and they injured someone or put someone in a river, um, 
would the town council be liable if we gave permission or let or just let it go ahead? It is a um, it is a very good question. Um, to tell you the truth, I don't know. Uh, I don't know exactly. We aren't. Um, <coughs> it, it, it is a it is a difficult one. I would probably need to check with uh, with uh, our uh, insurers as to uh, whether there would be uh, any liability there. Uh, my uh, my feeling would be that uh, there would be very limited liability uh, there because um, we can uh, we can uh, decide to allow people to uh, to cycle uh, on any of our. Uh, properties anyway um, uh, and I don't think there would be uh, I don't think there would be uh, much liability uh, there but I would need to I would need to check okay um, thank you Councillor Plant I was going to say we can ask Oxford on that one because it from the report Oxford have given use of the Thames path to both cyclists and walkers so they must have investigated it I'm assuming um, I, I do agree completely with what Dave is saying as well on the you know, it's a funny one because I don't think we expressly want to give permission and encourage, as it were. We're not saying kind of welcome all cyclists to the path, but maybe just look at a better way of encouraging, you know, respectable behaviour from those that do. Like, I actually do quite like the signs. I guess Remnant put them up on the other side that kind of say, you know, cyclists must give way and respect walkers or walkers have right of way to that effect. Um, but again, I don't know how well that's going to work and I don't know how well it'll work going forward. Okay, that is a, another suggestion, I suppose. I mean, we have we have some recommendations here. Uh, the first one is to continue to discourage uh, cycling on the towpath. It's not that's not a ban on cycling at Mill Meadows. Can I just say that? Um, and also, it's not something. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Parks Manager Carl. Um, it's not something that we heavily enforce either until it becomes an issue. Um, Councillor Lambert. Yeah, um, I'm really not sure it's our place to um, discourage or encourage cycling on the towpath. It's not allowed for reasons beyond this council. Um, so um, I, I really don't like the idea that we are sort of uh, either being a friend to the cyclist or an enemy of the cyclist when it really isn't our decision at all. However, um, I have a lot of sympathy for cyclists because, you know, they're sort of you know, in the middle, you know, pedestrians have their spaces, they can go, there's obviously the well-established rivalry between cyclists and, and, and motorists, and there's a really a desperate lack of cycle routes in this country in general, compared to sort of other countries in Europe. So 4.2b uh, is the only recommendation that I think is really relevant um, to this council, and it is one that I'm really in favour of. We could deal with a lot more cycle routes. Indeed, while I was mayor, I, I I wrote to um, uh, Schwarzenbach of uh, Cullen Court uh, and encouraged him um, to open up a cycle route across his land, which would have made it possible to cycle legally from Henley to Marlow safely, uh, because I believe that's the only gap where you actually have to go on the road if you want to cycle safely and legally. Um, uh, well, it's not safe at all. If you want to cycle legally, you have to go on the main road. Um, most cyclists don't. They, of course, um, go down the Thames path where they're not supposed to be. But that is because there really isn't any other route. Um, and I, th I feel sympathy for cyclists who are sort of pinched in the middle, really. Council plan. But just to, I think, correct a point, like, unless I'm reading it completely wrong, it is not not allowed to cycle on the Thames path. Like it even says in 3.9 that the Thames path national trails policy is to recommend to allow cycling where possible to encourage best practice for shared use and to manage shared use conflicts should it arrive. So they're actively encouraging where possible to have shared use. But That's that Thames path. True. I know it's not true of the towpath though. And um, at several points along the Thames path, there are no cycling signs. So the, there may be parts you can cycle on, but it's very incomplete. Uh, town clerk. Uh, whilst it's an offence to cycle on a footway next to a road, you are right that it isn't an offence, um, a criminal offence to cycle on a footpath, something like uh, the Thames path, for example. Um, it is a civil offence, uh, though, if the landowner doesn't permit it. 
Um, but the only recourse would be um, the landowner to, to claim damages and claiming damages against cyclists would be would be very difficult indeed. Okay. So is there anybody else that would like to speak or can we move to a proposal of some sort? I see nothing. <laughs> Nobody has a proposal. Uh, Councillor Plant. I guess it will be controversial, but all I, I like option A or the, the recommendation in option A, but rather than discourage to encourage you know, respectful use, as it were, or just to encourage good behaviour on it. So kind of, I don't know the exact wording, but rather than just discouraging, why don't we encourage good behaviour? So you mean like out. making it clear that pedestrians have right of way? Yeah. Rather exactly. than making it clear that cyclists don't? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Councillor Eggleton. Oh, wait there, you've got a proposal. Is that second? Yeah, Are you second. Doing proposal was, B as I well? I would second that, just leaving, um, like, yeah, just saying that the pedestrians have got right way and just be um, very cautious about people, especially children, because children have a habit of just darting off into different places. And some of the cyclists do come along there. So if they were, if there was some sort of signage or something saying, uh, be careful of pedestrians um, and go slow, um, and I, I, I'd second, um, if you could add that to it, I'd second. And so just, just, to, just to clarify for everybody as well as myself, um, you're recommending A and B, but instead of discourage, as we mentioned, um, pointing out that pedestrians have right of way rather than pointing out cyclists don't. Exactly that. And that's, been, that's been seconded, so we'll, we'll debate it. Um, Councillor Crook. Yeah, I'd just like to highlight, because Lawrence is a keen cyclist and he has a lot of male cycling friends, can you please not encourage the male cycling population to go along the towpath because we had issues with them cycling down the marketplace on Saturday where they use it as a cut. So we really would like that discouraged as well, even though it's a separate committee. If you could tell your friends not to do that, it'd be I'm, great. I'm sure, I'm sure Councillor Plant doesn't personally know all male <laughs> cyclists in Hadley, though. Everything. However popular a cyclist he may be. It's also Absolutely. not just male cyclists. <laughs> <laughs> I have an issue with because they're dreadful but no I don't want hordes of mm -hmm. I really don't want hordes of mammals going down the river tow path because I, I, I no I did, 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 did shall we shall we move to a vote unless anybody else would like to speak to this uh sorry uh Becky uh, can you just clarify what what the vote is okay or could you vote? change um, the A to exactly what you're Okay, to. so A, instead of focusing on discouraging cycling, um, it's focusing on uh, the fact that pedestrians have right of way and making that clear, um, rather than making it clear that cyclists don't have right of way as we are currently doing. So, I, I think the wording on the signs on the remnant side, I don't know it off the top of my head, but it is very good. And then we'd have kind of complete you know synchronization between the wording on the other side where the rowing coaches are and on this side and it would just give continuity through Henley so if you cycle in through Hamilton Lock you already know that pedestrians have right of way and then as you continue along should you choose to do so the signs continue telling you that pedestrians have right of way so maybe if we get the wording off the signs that are currently on that side that would be perfect by signs um we've currently used chalk those chalk templates so I would imagine that's the sim same kind that we would use going forward. Yep. If that's possible to get a different stencil back in. Uh, Councillor Clark. Is there sufficient room to put a, a white line with a cyclist on it so they just stay in one particular part of the path? Because it says for mobs, used to know it's six point down to three and a half metres, then two metres along the rest of the footpath. It, there's definitely parts of that footpath that are not two metres wide. Uh, not, not wide enough. Yeah, it's not, not wide enough for that, unfortunately. Uh, we, have, we have a proposal. It's been... Oh, sorry, Vicky. I just put subject to um, consultation with the highways department. Yeah, absolutely. Do you accept... Well, you, yeah, you have to. <laughs> OK. All of those in favour of the proposal... That's carried. So we move on to agenda item 10. 
Cemetery benches. You'll find a report on page 29 of your agendas. I think the report is quite clear. Um, we didn't discuss this last time. We had a statement from the town clerk. It is clear that mistakes were made in communication and that we have apologised as a town council for that. And I'm sure that we're all very sorry. And those of us that have lived here our entire lives have got relatives and friends in that very graveyard and we're not looking to offend anybody. Um, but that's not what we're discussing right now. <laughs> what we're discussing is the report in front of us and the recommendation, which is that the council resolve to approve the removal and repositioning of the benches as outlined in the report. And as you can see within the report, members of staff have been very, very considerate. Um, there's also a spreadsheet that's very clear about which benches are actually in a in a good condition and can remain, um, and some photographic photographic evidence of those that are quite literally falling apart. Um, Councillor Lambert. Yeah, um, just looking at 3.7a um, about um, benches being uh, repositioned, refurbished, anchored to the ground, whatever. When these are unauthorised benches, can we? be sure that there is no cost to the council and if they need renovating, replacing or anchoring that the cost of that is borne by the person who put the bench there without permission in the first place, not the taxpayer. Uh, Town Clerk, would you like to answer? Um, we have suggested that uh, where we've said that a bench can uh, remain, uh, then we would take responsibility for making sure it's in exactly the right place and anchored down. Um, and then we will uh, we will also uh, make sure that it is in a fit state of repair, uh, which will often involve um, uh, maintaining the bench ourselves um, uh, to make sure that it that it is that it is suitable. Um, this is something the parks would be uh, would be happy to do, uh, and it is a it is a concession. Uh, were we to agree uh, with a new memorial bench, um, if a memorial bench is is done with our agreement as per our our policy uh, arranged with us, then that already makes provisions for the council to take on that ownership and make sure those benches are maintained in, in, in a good state uh, and um, a respectful state to those on, on the memorial bench. Um, but so that's what we would do with the benches that we're, that we're saying uh, should remain. We would, we would take responsibility for making sure that they, uh, that they are secure and uh, in a suitable position and remain safe to use. Thank you, Sheridan. Uh, Councillor Eggleton. Um, I've obviously been contacted by several people over this, um, over the whole thing. And, and I've also been up and had a look at a few of the benches that people have mentioned to me because they got a bit worried at one point. I know that's been resolved now. But the benches that I have looked at, one of them was going to be taken out, but they didn't want to take it out in case they weren't allowed to put it back. Um, but they, they, that one is fixed into the ground. It was also put in by the council 20 years ago, and it has been um, maintained for over the 20 years, um, and they wanted to take it out again because of this... Um, take it out and refurbish it again. It is in good state of repair. It's a solid bench. Um, they looked after it every year um, on this particular one. The other one has been looked after every two years where they've um, treated it with tea coil and all that sort of stuff. And both the benches that I've looked at, um, and that I've also said that they needed to contact the town council um, uh, asking the question because I couldn't um, give him any other uh, any further information other than the two benches that I've looked at are in good state of repair and they're well maintained. Um, would the um, general public be, still be allowed to look after their own benches or would they be charged by the council um, to refurbish their benches at any time in the future? Uh, Tom Clark. Um, so with the benches that I think you're referring to, I think they are, are, are ones in the um, old part of the cemetery. 
Um, and of those, there's only one uh, which we're suggesting is removed because the legs are completely rotten. But I think the ones you're referring to um, are in a good uh, state of repair. Um, they're good solid benches and we're certainly not saying that they should be removed at all. Um, but that we wouldn't have a problem with the owners of the bench coming along and uh, treating the benches um, or whatever. We would, uh, we would obviously want to make sure that what they do to the benches is, is appropriate um, and they don't paint a bench and, and, uh, and which then uh, somebody could get paint on their clothes or, or whatever it might be. So we would, we would want to make sure that the work they do is, is suitable uh, for, for the bench and suitable for uh, the life of the bench. Um, but we wouldn't have any, we wouldn't have any um, problem with that um, in, in principle at all. Councillor Eggleton. Councillor Eggleton. Yeah. Um, so the best best word of advice then is um, whoever's watching this um, and the Henley Standard is to say that uh, if you wanted to refurbish your bench, um, you need to contact the council, telling them you're taking it away to refurbish it and telling them what you're going to do. So then they would be clear on what they've got to do. Uh, yes, indeed. We would always recommend that um, that anybody who has a bench there, especially one which they haven't previously uh, discussed with the council, that they, they shouldn't make any assumptions. They should get in touch with the council uh, to, to, to check with us what is, what is safe, what's appropriate um, to do with, with the bench. And we, of course, will work with them to make sure that they can have a, a, a bench in the right place, which is going to be a really lovely lasting memorial to their family member. Thank you, Town Clerk. Um, there's a recommendation, 4.1. Would anybody like to propose it? Councillor Plant, are you proposing it? Brilliant. I'll second that from the chair. All in favour? Thank you, that's carried. We now move on to agenda item 10, uh, or no, 11, sorry. Agenda item 11, Mill Meadows, the Riverbank Survey, which you'll find on page 35 of your agenda. As you'll see, we have another full report um, and summary that I'm sure everybody's read through. Are there any questions, comments? Uh, Councillor Eggleton. Is there, um, is in this part, I can't see it unless I've missed it. Um, about the slipway, not, uh, not the slipway which has been blocked off, the other slipway, um, because they were saying that it was, it's got a bit of a, a bit of a rut when people put their um, trailer in, their wheels get stuck in it. Yeah. Um, is, is there any way? Is that part of this um, plan, or is that not been put into this one? No, that's that's not part of this. Or I haven't heard about the. I mean, they could potentially be done at the same time and save money. I don't know if there maybe that's been suggested before. But this is the riverbank um, repairs along Mill and Marsh Meadows, Councillor Plant. That rut is quite far out, like as in it's the full length of a boat trailer, and then there's like a one foot drop off, as it were. So it's kind of not really part of the bank, more the very end of the slipway in the river, as it were. Um, I thought some concrete bags were put in it or something like that a couple of years ago to try and make it better anyway. But, um, yeah. let's, um, let's go back on to Mill and Marshmallow those for now. <laughs> um, are there any questions about this report? Are there any comments anyone would like to make about this work or, or the recommendation that you can see in 4.1? Councillor Plant. <laughs> Just going to say an incredibly detailed report again. I uh, liked all the pictures of the kind of the wooden areas that would be put on the moorings, kind of better than the current concrete work that we've got. Um, so yeah, was, you know, let's go ahead with it. It's going to be a it's going to be a big project and cause a bit of disruption, but yeah, I think it I think it seems good. Put it out to tender and see who we get back for it. I guess. Brilliant, Councillor Eggleton. Second. You're seconding that, okay. Um, and obviously, uh, once it's gone out onto Contracts Finder, um, the Parks Manager and our Town Clerk uh, will have the delegated powers to approve the specification. So, um, oh, Councillor Clark, did you want to speak? Yeah, do I just ask one question? With this being repaired, will it be piled or is it just concrete filling bags? Um, well, the 
the looks there. I mean, they're they're piled. They're sheet sheet piling. I think it's camp sheeting. Yeah. Thank you. Camp sheeting. Yeah. Are there any other any other questions before we move to the vote? Okay. All of those in favour of four point one. That's carried. Thank you very much. We now move on to agenda item 12, uh, trees, the approved contractors list, which I will find shortly, uh, on page 59 of your agendas. You can see, um, obviously, from Carl there and uh, the form. Councillor Plant. Well, just going through it, I think as long as Carl's happy um, and Carl and the town clerk are happy to go through it together after that, then great. Another yeah. straightforward, another straightforward one. Okay, brilliant. Is there anything you wanted to add, Carl? In that case, if that's a proposal to, to approve that bit that we needed to approve, I can't remember the exact word and I'm not on the relevant yeah, page. The establishment of an improved list of That's it. Um, prove a method of review. That's it. Yeah. Um, I'll second that. Any all in favour? Thank you very much. That's carried. Right. We now move on to agenda item 13, our final agenda item this evening, NOMAD outreach work. <coughs> we did actually um, receive this report at the end of your agendas on page 66 uh, from the NOMAD team. I think they've been pretty clear with their update there. Are there any, I mean, I don't know if you ask any questions, I'm not sure I'll actually be able to answer them, um, but obviously, um, you're aware that we uh, they diverted the funds that we'd given them previously uh, to help deal with COVID. Um, so that obviously restricted people weren't allowed to hang out with each other, so they couldn't exactly go and go and uh, do their normal outreach work at the time. But that money was put to uh, to good use, um, and they are slowly winding down their COVID efforts and picking up more of their normal services. Such as this, such as this one, um, as time progresses. Are there any other comments that anybody would like to make? I see none. In that case, uh, we close the meeting at half past eight. I'm not sure who said an hour, but well done. Mine was an hour and ten. Yes. <laughs>